Hello there, Glazerites. It is Carmen here again with Mako, and today we are going to review the glaze profile for our stoneware glaze, Norris Blue. Norris Blue is a frosted blue glaze that breaks well over texture and has a glossy finish. This glaze remains stable on its own, but can add mobility in combinations or when it has a heavy application. We're gonna start out by showcasing an application demo just so you can see a proper application of this glaze to achieve the results that you see in any of our published information. So first here we've got our lovely brushing pint here and on the label we have our sample tile showcasing three coats of Norris Blue on a white stoneware clay body fired to cone six. Anything varying from that could cause variation in your finish like we're going to review here but just so you know that's what all of our samples are fired to. On the side here we showcase our dinnerware safe label and always remember to log that lot number to our technical team if you do need to contact us for any reason. So starting out, I'm just gonna shake up the glaze. Oh, we got a fresh one. All right, still working with these older tops here. We've had a lot of people uh, contact us complaining about them and uh, Actually, the more recent pints that I've been using have had our old tops again, so they're coming back, guys, all right? It was all for supply chain issues, as I know everyone's heard uh, for too long now, but really is what it is. We've moved back to our normal tops, so just uh, hold tight for us there. We really appreciate your patience and understanding uh, in navigating this. Um, all right, so for the demo here, I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna use our uh, RB144 number four soft fan here. I love this one. It uh, plumps up really well with glaze, has a plastic handle, so you don't have all the paint chipping off or anything like that. If you're heavy handed, or sorry, if you tend to be light handed or are glazing a larger surface, we recommend using our number eight soft fan. This one is just a little bit bigger, plumps up a little bit better. So you're just putting more glaze on your surface when you're using this larger brush. Since I'm just doing a tile and I have a heavy hand using a number four brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this guy. So starting out, I like to mix my brush and the glaze and that really ensures that my brush is nice and plumped up with glaze. I don't want my brush to be dragging across the surface. I don't know if you can hear that. We don't hear it, all right? So we're gonna apply this glaze on. I like to say we're smearing peanut butter on, really building material up on that surface. You don't want any dragging or you're gonna start ripping your bread. So there's one coat. As you can see, I really just slop that glaze on. We really want to build up enough material here to create an interaction uh, on the surface. If you are someone who does combinations and you think it looks really stiff, that's probably because you just need to put more glaze on. So if we recommend two coats and two coats and yours is really stiff, uh, maybe you need to do three coats and three coats. You know, maybe you need to fire it hotter. There's actually a lot of things that could influence it, but one foundational thing that I see a lot with our technical requests is that people need to apply glaze heavier. So that's why I'm reviewing these and all of our glaze profiles. I wanna make sure that you guys know the best way to get the results that you see us posting. So we have our first coat here. It will dry quickly, but it does not dry immediately. So definitely keep that in mind. If your coats are drying immediately, that's probably because you're not putting enough glaze on. All right, to the tiles. So here we have our cone six tiles showcasing one, two, and three coats. As you can see, this beautiful frost, as we call it, builds up uh, 
as you apply more glaze. So the first coat is actually kind of translucent or transparent here. Um, the second coat, you get a little bit of that frosting happening. And then the third coat, it seems to be pretty opaque, um, but it does break over texture and it almost gets lighter as you apply it heavier, which is really nice. And on the back here, we just have the three coats. Beautiful variation. It doesn't move at all. Very, very stable. And Norris Blue is part of a grouping of glazes that we've called the modeled glazes. So we have uh, 165 through 169, which is Lavender Mist, Norris Blue, Sand and Sea, and uh, Frosted Lemon. In addition to Raspberry Mist, those five glazes are part of our modeled glaze line. Um, we've divided some glazes into glaze groupings Check out the comprehensive stoneware guide on our website. Um, and these are divided into performance groupings. So all those glazes that I just listed will perform very similar with this kind of application. They perform similar in combination sort of thing. So if you like this glaze, but maybe you want an orange one, Coral Sands is a great alternative because you've got that orange and you already know how it performs. So we tried to make that easy for you guys. So definitely check out the resources literature, comprehensive stoneware guide on our website. All right, so we've got our cone five and cone six comparison. So we've got one, two, and three coats. Here, uh, the cone five seems to not frost up as much despite it being um, the same amount of glaze. So the additional heat work really does help showcase this color a little bit brighter. Um, and then on the back here, as you can see again, it's definitely brighter. When you fire it to cone six, um, but you still do have a nice glossy finish at cone five. So it's not under fired by any means, but the performance is a little bit different with the two firing temperatures. Check back in with our tile here. Get our two and three coats on there. All right, the second coat. Really lay that glaze on there. This is one glaze that I really like to put on heavy because I really like that frosted modeling that happens with it. And I can count on it being a stable glaze. So just three nice heavy coats on its own. It's not going to move off of my piece. All right, so we've got two coats. This will take a little bit longer to dry, which is how you know you have enough material on there. All right, and we have cone 10 here. So here's three coats and cone 10 reduction and just three coats with cone six. The cone 10 does have a little bit of more mobility than cone six showcased, but it's not like running off of my piece. Um, this particular result ended up being really bright. I have seen uh, Norris Blue lean a little bit more purple or darker when it turns, when it's fired in a cone 10 reduction. That result is featured on our website. We do have cone 10 results for all of our stonework glazes on our website. So if you see Norris Blue, it's probably that more purple finish. So the reduction can have a bit of variation with it, which I like to kind of feature because just because you see a glaze on a tile doesn't mean it's going to always look that way. There's so much um, so many variables that will play into the fire results of any glaze. And here we have a uh, cone six with light and dark flux. Here we have flux applied underneath three coats of Norris blue. This uh, light flux is gorgeous, brightening up this beautiful blue, adding a nice amount of mobility. And then here we have the dark flux interacting here. This has beautiful striations, great mobility. I love the interaction with this here. And on the back here, we have the flux over the Norris blue, which still, again, beautiful reactions. I love this kind of consistent striation that's happening. It looks like it is a little bit more mobile than it was when it's applied underneath, which is kind of interesting. And then here we have our cone 10 with flux. So both of these are, is flux applied over three coats of Norris blue. The more heat work, it is 
a little bit more mobile. I can tell by the kind of buildup of glaze that's happened here, but it's still not running off of my piece. You got great interaction. I love the depth that's created here with the light flux. All right, we'll see this guy is still drying. So we'll let that continue to do so. We'll review our alternative clay bodies. So here we have three coats of Norris blue applied to brown bear. The, these glaze, the modeled glaze line, all of these perform really, really well on different clay bodies. I don't even fire it with any special firing and it still looks fine. Um, as standard practice, um, all of our tiles get fired with the special firing, but I have done firings without it and it still is fine with just a standard cone six. So these glazes play really well and it creates some nice um, variation and depth when you have it on this dark, dark clay body. Here we've got it on a speckled brown. I believe this is standard 112. Uh, here you can see that the speckles come through and this beautiful brown that comes through, it breaks really, really well. It looks really nice. I don't have any surface issues or anything like that. And it's still nice and bright. And then here we have it on a white speckled body. It's still nice and bright and the speckles come through really well. Don't have any surface issues. All around looks really, really great. And then here we'll go over our combinations. So first here, we've got it with Himalayan salt over Norris blue. All of our combinations, we apply two coats of each glaze. So here we apply two coats of Norris blue first, and then we apply two coats of Himalayan salt second, and the Himalayan salt we stopped here. Okay, actually this looks like it's sea salt. It looks like it might've been mislabeled on the bottom. All these crystals are definitely sea salt. So please forgive me. Sea salt over Norse blue, which makes a lot more sense because Himalayan salt has a lot of mobility. So having it on a glaze that is a little bit mobile, I would expect it to move more. But with the alabaster or with the sea salt, both of these glazes are can be mobile, but aren't. So that makes sense that it's not running too much, but it does have some mobility. So again, my, apologize, my apologies. This is sea salt over Norse blue. Here we have raspberry mist over Norse blue. I love this purple that's created here. With the blue coming through that pink from the raspberry mist so again two coats of new norris blue first and then two coats of raspberry mist leaving about an inch on the bottom and then here we have rainforest over norris blue so the rainforest and all of our 2021 glazes uh kind of showcase this awesome variation when it's applied in combination it's kind of cool getting different drips and striations happening with it um, the rainforest is a very mobile glaze which makes sense because we get all these pooling so this is kind of how i was expecting the himalayan salt to perform when i thought that was himalayan salt but it's sea salt so fair mistake they're both salty glazes so again rainforest over norse blue here we get a decent amount of mobility and some nice green colors with that blue coming through. All right, we'll do our final coat on our sample tile here. And even on the third coat, I'm still mixing my brush into that glaze, making sure it's got enough glaze on it. And here, third coat. Spreading it on like peanut butter, guys. We want to make sure we're building up a decent amount of material. All right, so that's three coats there. And so when this is fired to cone six, it'll look like this. When it's fired to cone five, 
It'll look like that. And I think that is all that I have for all of you for Norris Blue. So thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, please drop any questions or concerns that you have in the comments. We love to answer them here. Um, if you haven't yet, please be sure to check out our glaze profile gallery or our glaze combo gallery on our website. And as well as joining Mako Mudroom Society on Facebook. Mako Mudroom Society is an awesome resource to kind of cover these bases, but where your peers and our other customers have used our products. So to kind of get it outside of Mako's design studio and really seeing our glazes used in real practice, join our Facebook group, Mako Mudroom Society. And that'll be a really, really nice resource if you haven't checked it out yet. So again, thank you so much for your time today. And as always, make it Mako.